On July 4th, 2012, while many Americans were celebrating Independence Day with barbecue and fireworks, particle physicists were celebrating something far more exciting, the discovery of the Higgs boson. In 2022, the Higgs boson will turn 10 years old. Let's find out what's happened over the last decade. The Higgs boson was the last undiscovered particle of the Standard Model. This boson is the experimental signature of a thing called the Higgs field. The Higgs field gives mass to fundamental subatomic particles like the quarks and leptons. The Higgs field was proposed in a series of papers published back in 1964 by no less than six individuals. The boson itself was proposed by Peter Higgs, which is probably why we call it the Higgs boson, rather than the unwieldy Brout and Glare Higgs Goralnik Hagen Kibble boson. If you're interested in the history, there's a book that tells the story of the development of Higgs theory, and I list it in the video description below. If you're interested in how the Higgs boson and field work, I invite you to watch a video I made, which you can see here. And of course, the link is in the description. I made this video a year before the Higgs boson was discovered, and it was my first video that I made on the YouTube channel. 11 years, and I haven't aged a bit, right? And I can still fit in the same t-shirt. Over the next 48 years, many experiments searched for the Higgs boson, including here at Fermilab. Indeed, Fermilab experiments came very close to finding it. We ruled out a range of possible masses and published papers that told the scientific community that, if the Higgs boson existed, it had to have a mass in a rather tight range, but we never claimed discovery. That honor went to researchers at the Large Hadron Collider, which is located at the CERN Laboratory in Europe. I have to be careful here because many of the Fermilab scientists looking for the Higgs were also working on CERN experiments, including me. So it was a case of me competing with me, or more accurately, 800 scientists at Fermilab competing with 6,000 scientists at CERN, with a lot of overlap between the groups. It was all a bit confusing. The Higgs boson interacts with all fundamental particles that have mass. Indeed, it's more accurate to say that particles have mass because they interact with the Higgs boson. And the ones that interact more with the boson have more mass. Because of that, the Higgs boson prefers to decay into heavier particles. The heaviest particles of the standard model are the top quark, followed by the Higgs boson itself, the Z and W bosons, the bottom quark, and then all the rest. The Higgs boson decays into a pair of particles, one Higgs into two daughters. It turns out that pairs of top quarks in W and Z bosons are heavier than the Higgs boson, so you'd think that decays into those particles would be forbidden, although there's a bit more to that story. The heaviest particle into which the Higgs boson can decay, according to classical energy conservation, is the bottom quark. So that would be the sensible place to look for Higgs bosons, which is to say events in which a bottom quark and antiquark are created. But there are other ways to make bottom quark antiquark pairs, and those ways are way more common. In fact, you expect to see tons of collisions in which bottom quark pairs are produced at the LHC. The trick is finding the tiny fraction that came from Higgs boson decays. That's super hard, and it wasn't a realistic way to discover the Higgs boson. So what did scientists do? Well, they got clever. They relied on a trick of quantum mechanics, which says that it's possible to make particles which don't have the expected mass. So they looked for events in which pairs of W and Z bosons were produced, but allowed those particles to have a different mass than they normally would. They even looked for events in which the Higgs boson decayed into low-mass top quark antiquark pairs. But in this case, they relied on the process in which the top quark and antiquark then annihilated into pairs of photons. So that's how the Higgs boson discovery was done back in 2012. Scientists look for events with pairs of high-energy photons and also pairs of W and Z bosons, but without requiring that the particles had their expected mass. And wonder of wonders, the Higgs boson was discovered. Two experiments, one called ATLAS and the one Fermilab is a member of called CMS, announced the discovery of the Higgs boson. There was a big announcement at CERN. Peter Higgs and some of the other theorists were in attendance. There was a huge and worldwide press coverage, and a bit over a year later, the Nobel Prize in Physics 
was awarded to Peter Higgs and Francois Englert for their work in predicting the boson nearly five decades prior. It was an amazing accomplishment. Now, when the two LHC experiments made their announcements of the discovery of the Higgs boson, it was with a small amount of data, just enough to discover the existence of a new particle, but we weren't 100% certain that it actually was the Higgs boson. We just knew its mass and spin and charge. It had reasonable properties for a Higgs boson, but we needed to check how it decayed and verify that it decayed at the rates predicted by the theory. Heck, back then, we weren't even sure if there was only one particle. Maybe there were several new particles, and we've just discovered the first one. Multiple Higgs boson is a prediction of supersymmetric theories, so finding more than one would have been evidence for supersymmetry. But back then, that was all in the future. In 2012, we only had a little bit of data. Since then, each experiment has received nearly 20 times as much data as was used to make the discovery. So where do we stand? Well, both experiments have measured the mass of the Higgs boson with considerable precision. The current value is 125.25 plus or minus 0.17 billion electron volts, or more than 133 times the mass of a proton. Both experiments have seen the Higgs boson decay into other particles, including tau and mu leptons, as well as bottom quarks. And the theory and measurement are all consistent with Higgs theory. Furthermore, searches for other Higgs bosons have come up empty. So far, there is no evidence that there are additional Higgs bosons. Again, another win for the theory proposed back in 1964. So what's the future? Well, the LHC is restarting in 2022 after an extended period of upgrades and refurbishments. Over the next couple of years, we expect to double the amount of data recorded. After that, there will be another shutdown period to do more upgrades, and then the LHC will turn on again and deliver something like 20 times more data than we've recorded so far. That's going to be some crazy times. How do we expect to improve our understanding of Higgs bosons? Well, one thing we're going to look for are collisions in which two Higgs bosons are produced. That will give us a really good understanding of how Higgs bosons gives mass to Higgs bosons. It's all a bit circular, but, but very cool. You know, one very interesting feature of physics research is something that was once a discovery very quickly becomes a tool. For instance, while the discovery of the Higgs boson really was a big deal, it wasn't long before the LHC experiments pivoted to using the Higgs to expand our understanding of other physical phenomena. For example, the announcement back in 2018, when both LHC experiments announced that they'd seen events which simultaneously produced a top anti-top quark pair and a Higgs boson. Such events probe the strong nuclear force, the electroweak force, and the Higgs phenomena, all in a single collision. And of course, researchers now look to events which, in which Higgs bosons are produced to look for deviations from predictions. For instance, the state of the art of measuring Higgs boson production has uncertainties in the range of 10 or 20 percent. When the amount of data doubles over the next couple of years and increases 20-fold over the next decade and a half, we'll be able to make measurements that currently we can only imagine. It could well be that when we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the discovery of the Higgs boson, that we'll have found something that changes our understanding of the laws of nature. Science never stops. Okay, so this is definitely a cool time. In a short 10 years, we've gone from wondering whether the Higgs boson is real or not to no longer having any doubt and using it to look for new phenomena. Just mind-blowing. If you like learning about how our understanding of the Higgs boson has evolved, please sure like to subscribe and share. And let all of your friends know of this momentous birthday, one of the neatest ones in all of physics. And that's saying something because, well, as you know, physics is everything.